Hey, how's it going? I'm Ben Lindell, and today I'm going to be showing you a couple of uses for aux tracks in Pro Tools. The first one is as a subgroup. Now, this is where I take multiple audio tracks and I sum them down through my aux track. That way, I can apply EQ and compression as well as control the level for all those tracks with one fader. The second use is as an effects send. Now, this way, I can send multiple tracks and have them share a single reverb or delay. And this is going to save me CPU power and also make my mix sound more cohesive. So let's get started. So here we are in my well-organized Pro Tools session. So the first set of tracks that I want to subgroup together are going to be my drums. This way later on, if I need to put any EQ or compression on all of them, I can do that. And I can also automate the volume throughout the song for all the drums using just one fader. So now to add an aux track, I'm going to select the last track of my drums. So that way when I create an aux track, it'll be right next to it and press Command Shift N or Control Shift N on a PC. So now my drums are going to be in stereo, so I select stereo, aux, input, and press create. Great. Now I'm going to name my track, and I'm going to color it yellow, which is my color that I use for subgroups because it's very easy to see throughout the session. Next, I'm going to solo save my aux track by pressing Command on a Mac or Control on a PC and clicking on the solo button. This way, when I solo a drum, I'll still be able to hear it through my subgroup. Now I need to assign an input to my aux track. To do that, I come up here and click on No Input, select Bus, and I'm just going to go with the first available one, Bus 1, 2. Now I like to rename my buses as soon as I make them. It'll make it easier to find them later on. So to do that, I'm going to right-click on the bus name, and press rename. I'm going to give it a more descriptive name, such as drums. Great. Now for output, I'm just going to leave it as 1-2 because that's what I'm using for the rest of my session. So now to send my drums to my newly made drum subgroup, I select my room mic, press shift, and click on my kick drum. That selects all my drum tracks. And now to assign them all to my drum subgroup, I'm going to press option shift on a Mac or alt shift on a PC and click on where it says 1-2, which is its current output, and reassign them to my newly made drum bus. And there we go. Now my drums are going through my drum subgroup, and I'm ready to go. So as you can see, this is actually a pretty easy process to do, and it's very easy to repeat. So I'm going to do the same thing for my guitars. Make a new stereo aux track. Give it a name. Give it a color, solo safe, input select, rename, select the tracks I want to send to my aux. So that's it. So I like to do this to each type of instrument, drums, guitars, keyboards, vocals, etc. So that way I end up with about five or six different yellow subgroup faders throughout my session. So that way, when I need to turn the guitars up by 1 dB, I just had to reach for the guitar subgroup fader. Or if I want to high pass the vocals, instead of having to put a plug on in each single vocal track, I can just add one EQ to my subgroup track. It makes my life a lot easier. Now on to my second use for aux tracks, as effects sense. So I need to add reverb to both my snare drum and my vocal track. So to do that, I'm going to make an aux track and put a reverb plug in on it and send both of my vocal and snare drum to that track. I like to keep all my effects sends at the bottom of my session. So I'm going to select the last track in my mix window and then do create new track. Again, it's command shift N or control shift N on a PC. Select stereo for my reverb and aux input again and press create. Okay, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to enable solo safe. So that way when I solo my vocal or snare drum, I'll still be able to hear the reverb on it. I'm not going to recolor my effects sense because I like the green color that they come in. So let's go and assign an input. Again, I click on the no input, bus, and I'm just going to go with the next one available, bus 5-6. Again, I'm going to give it a more descriptive name. Now I need to insert a reverb plugin on my aux track. Terrific. Now I'm going to go to my vocal track and send to my reverb bus. This brings up my send fader, which controls the amount of signal that's going to be sent to my reverb. So I'm just going to 
bring this up a whole bunch and move on over to my snare drum track. And I'm going to let it share the reverb. So I go and select the same exact bus, reverb. Again, brings up my send fader. I'm going to send a whole bunch of it there as well. So there we go. Now I have both my snare drum and vocal sharing a reverb. So now they're going to sound like they're in the same space, and I also don't have to put a reverb on each individual audio track, which is going to save me a whole bunch of CPU power as well. Today I showed you a couple of uses for aux tracks. We've made some subgroups and also effects sense. Now what these allow us to do is be more efficient with our plugin usage and also give us a little more control over the big picture of our mix. So that's it. Till next time.